the first time that I meet with a client is also the first time that I meet their house. So I walk around and I take a tour and I listen to both what the house and the human have to say. So the human usually says something like, oh my gosh, I just don't have enough space. These closets are so small. And the house usually counters with, oh my gosh, she's got so much stuff and she's jammed all this crap into my closet and I just, I don't want all this stuff in here. So it's important to really listen to both sides of the story as I walk through and I'll take notes. But just like a child in a family also has something to add to the story, our furniture is not left out of this. So we have this interesting relationship with furniture. Either we buy it um, and spend a lot of money on it or we inherit it or um, we bought it thinking it was gonna be an investment piece, whatever it is. But the reason that it comes to us is really irrelevant but that reason keeps us from letting it go furniture is this odd thing where it comes in and it hardly ever leaves people can get very defensive at the idea of switching out furniture pieces you know, oh well that was my grandmother's or you know that's an antique or gosh that cost us a lot of money i really want that to work or it's part of a set i mean i've, I've heard a lot of excuses and you probably will have noticed yourself saying some of these things but I want you to think about furniture in an organizational standpoint. So if you are in one specific room, and let's use an example, say a home office, and you sort out everything that's in there, everything that's hiding, everything that's being stored, you clear away the excess, you purge, that basically that means you purge, you get rid of all the stuff that you're not using, you move things around to the rooms where they belong, and then you step back and look and say, okay, the furniture in this room, is it serving me or is it not? And that's the only time that you should start to evaluate furniture. Now what happens is, is we try to force furniture to work for us when in fact it's working against us. Furniture, in my opinion, I'm an organizer, I'm not a decorator, furniture should first be functional and then second be fancy. So if you are in a home office and you have a desk and it doesn't have any drawers, you don't have a lot of closet space, but you have a lot of what I call office supplies, then you're going to need something like a dresser or a chest. You're gonna need something with drawers to hold the stuff. And a lot of times office supplies are sort of little things paper clips, binder clips, notepads, extra pens, stamps, envelopes, that sort of stuff, you're gonna need a proper piece of furniture to hold all of that. And open book shelving sometimes isn't the best option because visually it can be very cluttery. Well, that is when we need to start to grade our furniture. Does this furniture piece pass with an A, a B, a C, or does it fail as a D or F? And I like to grade the furniture because it gives you a really great scale as to say, mm, it's close, but maybe I need something better and then you can keep an eye on it. But if a furniture piece is really not serving you, then I highly recommend moving it to the garage temporarily. If you don't have space in the garage, then we need to talk. But put it out there and see if one, you can sell it, or two, you can find um, another home for it in your own house. Maybe there's another room that it would better serve you. But I want you to repeat after me. Furniture should work for me, not against me.